Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Ethiopia releases over 350 prisoners as part of an amnesty announced earlier this month. Amongst those let out is opposition leader Mirera Gudina, who was arrested in 2016. Also in DR Congo, President Joseph Kabila's disputed mandate continues to cause trouble. The Protestant church adds its voice to concerns about the country's leadership. And South Africans are partying hard to the air-splitting riffs of a culture clash. Punk rock is exploding in popularity in the country. We hear from up-and-coming band TCIYF about their love of skateboarding and loud music. But first, on Wednesday, Ethiopia released over 350 prisoners as part of an amnesty announced earlier this month. Many of those freed were accused of having been involved in ethnic clashes during waves of fatal anti-government unrest that first erupted in 2015. Amongst those let out this week was opposition leader Marera Gudina, who was arrested in 2016. Marera is the chair of the opposition Oromo Federalist Congress and was met by thousands of jubilant supporters as he arrived in his hometown of Burayu. He said that despite his detention, he plans on returning to politics. For myself, I have never violated, violated the law. I was a former member of a parliament. I know the constitution and the law. The government is saying um, they want to uh, build uh, a ground for a national consensus, uh, for national reconciliation. This is what I heard from uh, the government media. Ethiopia has long been accused of suppressing dissent and harassing critics. Prime Minister Haile Marion Dessalin has said that the amnesty is part of a plan to improve national consensus. Netsnet Bele is Amnesty International's Africa director, who himself was jailed for two years in Ethiopia for his work with human rights. He told me earlier of his reaction to the amnesty. By all means, this is a welcome step, and uh, some of us who have lived through this uh, will understand what a sigh of relief this would mean for those released today, for the families and loved ones. And, and this is indeed a, a remarkable step forward. But we believe that there are still hundreds of prisoners of conscience in Ethiopia who've been either detained, uh, have been convicted of crimes they have not committed, or still under trial, and most of them simply for exercising their right to freedom of speech. And those, all those prisoners of conscience need to be released in, with immediate effect unconditionally. And... As well as the releases, do you have any indication that further reforms are forthcoming uh, on the part of the government? Well, nothing is concrete at the moment. Um, we believe that beyond the mere release of prisoners of conscience currently detained in Ethiopia in, in the country, the government needs to do radical reforms uh, to ensure that there is uh, a meaningful political space uh, f uh, in the country. And, and one of the most important steps, obviously, is to ensure that people have the freedom to exercise the right to speak, the right to protest, the right to uh, express their opinions. These are the rights that have been denied to millions of Ethiopians for years. And one important step that marks and hopefully will mark a genuine step towards reform is amending or repealing repressive laws that are currently in place in the country, which are being used to stifle dissent, such as the anti-terrorism proclamation, uh, the, the, regulate, the laws that regulate civil society organizations and media. All of these laws are being systematically used to stifle dissent. And these laws need to be reformed with immediate effects to ensure a meaningful space for political dialogue and reconciliation. In DR Congo, President Joseph Kabila's controversial leadership continues to cause unrest. UN officials have warned that the militia in the east are uniting in opposition to the leader and becoming increasingly politicised. Kabila's refused to step down after his last constitutionally official term ended in 2016. Elections have been delayed until the end of this year. On Wednesday, the Protestant church added its voice to concerns about repression in the country. Thomas Nicolon has more. 
After the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church is now expressing an opinion on the political crisis in DR Congo. Uh, on Tuesday, Pastor Ekofo delivered a speech during his mass, a speech during which he had strong words against the government. He said, among other things, uh, that Congolese citizens must hand the country down to the future generations with a, an efficient state that delivers. And according to him, it's not the case at the moment. He delivered this speech in front of President Kabila's wife and the Prime Minister. Now, according to the government, uh, what the pastor actually meant is that uh, the authorities are being too indulgent against those who break the law in DR uh, Congo, and that is why uh, the government spokesman Lambert Mendes says he totally agrees uh, with the pastor. He says uh, that uh, DR Congo has been pushing democracy too far. Now. There's another match that's being planned in the Ark Congo for the 21st of January. It's being planned by the Catholic Church. But on the very same day, a few members of the government are also planning a march. More protests against rising food prices were held in Sudan on Wednesday. The cost of bread in particular has surged across the country because of a shortage of wheat. 200 demonstrators clashed with police in the city of Omdurman, the latest in a wave of rallies. Several activists have been detained since protests began earlier this month. The Sudanese Communist Party chief, Mokhtar Al-Kati, has reportedly been arrested. Supporters of the leader of a Shia sect protested in Abuja in Nigeria on Wednesday. They're demanding his release. Sheikh Ibrahim Zakzaki has been in prison since 2015 after his followers clashed with the army in the city of Zaria. His group, the Islamic Movement of Nigeria, has been banned in the state of Kaduna. The IMN is a minority sect in the mainly Sunni Muslim north. Zakzaki's followers say that they're being unfairly treated by authorities. What is happening to the Shia leader and the members of the Islamic Movement is completely injustice. A situation where they kill, continuously kill their members you know, and continue to detain their leader. It's uncalled for. It's against the norm of justice and equity and as sane Nigerians and responsible Nigerians we must as a matter of fact condemn it you know, which is exactly what we are doing we are asking the government to do what is right riot police have clashed with protesters in Sayaya Nakhin in South Africa over a controversial school policy demonstrators say that dozens of English speaking pupils were denied admissions to an Afrikaans school Afrikaans is mainly spoken by white South Africans and protesters accused the Hosh Kul Ofafal institution of race racism. The school and the Gauteng Education Department have been locked in a court battle over the issue. Officials say that the pupils should be allowed to attend, but last week a high court ruling disagreed. Authorities plan on appealing. Staying in South Africa, it's time to raise the roof. Punk rock is exploding in popularity in the country. One of the bands riding the wave is TCIYF. I won't tell you what it means, as that is what the internet's for. We hear, though, from them about their love of skateboarding and loud music. The anti-establishment music known as punk rock was born in the 1970s in the UK, the US and Australia. This is the 2018 South African version. The band's name is TCIYF. Is, 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 what does it mean? It's great, man. It's like I can, I can express myself freely. You know? I can be who I want. I can be myself. The musicians come from Soweto and met when they were all skaters. We started the band via skateboarding. We like skateboarding very fast and dangerous. So, you know, you need a soundtrack to fit that. So we moved on right from the skateboarding into punk. In December, the band played at the Afro Punk Festival in Johannesburg. Punk rock is growing in popularity, especially among Born Freeze. That's the name given to the generation born after apartheid ended in 1994. A generation that has lived only under democracy but still feels let down by the system. And punk rock helps it express its rage. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks very much for joining us. Do so again. Take care. People and Profit, presented by Stephen Carroll.
Business news is not about numbers, nor percentages and statistics. Business news is about people and how we live our lives. People and profit goes beyond numbers to analyze how the global flow of money and profits shape our world. Intelligent and accessible, the show cuts across business, economics and politics. People and profit on France 24 and France24.com. Reporters, presented by Mark Owen. How can a simple fracture lead to an American footballer ending up in a morgue? What is the link between backache and one of the worst drugs in the world? The answers lie in a painkiller, commonly prescribed by doctors. See France 24's report from the US where opioids are now the leading cause of death among the under 50s. Reporters on France 24 and France24.com.